Good. We got there. Let me adjust my phone here. We are good to go. Success. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I'm excited. Okay, perfect. I'm sure if for some odd reason our audio is not okay, uh, the internet land will, will let us know. But so far, uh, some waves and heart emojis. So I think we're solid. We pulled it off. Yes, I'm excited. It helps I'm on the right platform now, though, you know. <laughs> hey, those are behind the scenes secrets that nobody ever needs to know about, you know? That's all yes, the, the, the wonders of broadcast. So, you know, your story crossed my path. I will admit that I did not see, you know, CrossFit did a video about you, you know, a nice little five minute video, which I actually did not see. It missed it. I missed it. And then when you joined Lynchpin, you know, it got posted there in the private Facebook group. Then I checked it out. It was awesome. And I was like, I got to get this guy on board for an interview. So anybody who doesn't know us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, again, I'm Zach Lewis. I'm a third grade school teacher um, here in uh, teaching Middletown, Ohio. Um, I've been CrossFitting, I guess you'd say, for uh, seriously for maybe about three years. Um, I've been really trying to lose weight for the last two. Um, I tore both patella tendons off both my kneecaps at the same time. So that kind of started the journey of weight loss and trying to get back to normal health, whatever that looks mm -hmm. like for people. Um, and here I am. I, uh, I needed a community. Um, I looked at several different places and uh, to be talking to Pat Sherwood right now is kind of uh, the place to be. And, and Lynchpin has, has really helped me out just even starting, just looking at different things. So um, that's, well, that's kind of where we're at right now. Well, we're certainly happy to have you on board. But what I, what I was really excited about when I learned about your story and then, you know, you and I had a phone call was how open and honest, honest and transparent and authentic you were about you know, the weight loss journey that you've been on so far, and that is not over, you know, that you still want to go somewhere with it. And what struck me was not only your honesty that I thought sharing that story would help motivate or inspire some other people, Absolutely. but, um, you know, you just, you had a, not everybody is willing to talk about it. So the fact that you were, I thought was really cool. So to put some things in perspective, I guess, um, to set the stage, you know, you're on a weight loss journey. What was your highest, you know, what was the most that you had weighed at one point in your life? And what are you at right now as we do this video? Uh, the highest I got to is 405. Um, and right now, this morning, I was 298. Um, oh, that's so over 100. Yeah, we're over 100 now. Um, we're keep going. Before, in my mind, I really wanted to be at 100. And now I'm like, I just want to go in increments of 20 because I feel that's a nice small number. I can manage it every two months. I'm not, it's not over, over the top or anything like that. I think a lot of people sometimes get too involved in like a big number and then, you know, it's going to take a while. So mm -hmm. getting involved in that big number is a little bit um, deceiving or, or is not as easy. You mentioned something that I thought we'd get into down the road, but since you brought it up, we'll touch on it now. And that was that your goal is now 20 pounds every two months. Because I was curious, what have you learned is a healthy, sustainable pace that you can lose weight that actually isn't too much where it's unrealistic and isn't too little? Is, is that 20 pounds? 20 pounds in two months, 10 pounds a month to me, seems like that's a ton to lose. So, so far in my mind, it seems like it's okay. It's obtainable uh, because I still have a kind of a lot to go. Let's be honest. Um, you know, I want to get down to like 250-ish or so. So, um, right now it's coming off pretty quick and I feel happy with 20 pounds. But if, say, in three months it's not coming off the way I like or it's not coming off in, in these big increments anymore, I, to I totally get that and understand that and want people to realize that that's just a goal. So like in my mind, goals are always ever changing. They never stay the same in my mind. I think that you can kind of readjust and, and go from there um, if you have to. So 
you know, everybody has a different, a different journey that, you know, or start that got them to where they are. Were you somebody, when you mentioned that you had some injuries, were you somebody who was, you know, heavy as a child and just the weight continued to pile on over the years? Or were those injuries the catalyst that led to some excessive weight gain? Um, I think I was, I was always big. I was always a bigger guy um, all through high school and college. But what really set off the kind of weight loss or the bomb was the, the I spent eight months um, in a hospital bed um, in my living room. So oh, wow. um, uh, for the first four weeks, I was non-weight bearing. Um, for the first uh, 12 months, I was in um, not 12 months, probably eight months. I was in, um, braces from hips, my hip to my ankle locked out straight. Um, Jeez. so that's when a lot of my mobility and inability to lose weight and kind of get off track is where that started to happen. Um, so that it, it's kind of, I was always big and then this catastrophic injury happened and, um, kind of set everything off from there. How long ago was that? Uh, six years. Six years ago. Okay. And do you have an idea of what you weighed before that accident? And then, you know, how much you weighed, I guess, when you finally get out of the hospital bed after eight months? Um, I was at like 330 before it happened. Um, okay. And then around 405-ish um, when I could start moving again. So if you could imagine you walk around with straight legs for – May I think it was probably seven months till they let me um, start bending my legs to move, and then be obese, three hundred seventy pounds, and have to teach yourself to walk and sit um, all over again because you you know you lose that muscle that you kind of lose that muscle to be able to do that. So physical therapy was even more challenging. Oh, I'm sure if I had been a different weight probably than I was. So starting that is really was really eye-opening and like you know i got to do something um i couldn't keep carrying on that way we you know i interviewed a while ago my sister-in-law who's lost about 100 pounds as well and she you know one of the things that she revealed to me which i had no idea was how much pain that she was in on a daily basis carrying that weight around but she never let it show at least in front of us behind closed doors she was in a tremendous amount of horrific pain every day of her life and doing normal daily tasks involved a level of discomfort that I can't even imagine. Was that your story? Were you living in pain? Yeah, I was living in pain, but it was um, more of a mental pain for me because I wasn't able to help my, my kids the way I wanted to. Um, wasn't able to be on the floor with them as babies because I couldn't get up. Um, I, I couldn't help them on their bike. There's a, and, and mentally that really got to me more than physical pain. Um, sure. and I think that's, that's kind of where the anxiety started kicking in and things like that. And now that I'm losing weight and feeling better and working out and things like that, the anxiety is floating away. But, you know, uh, my pain was more of a mental pain of not being able to, I was an athlete in high school and college or an athlete. Um, in high school and college and one and you know i was playing in basketball leagues with my brothers i was golfing and things like that and this injury happened and all that. that also was a mental thing for me to get over and not be able to be that active person i was um so that that is the, the mental anguish you know i kind of uh dealt with more than the physical pain of course my knees hurt um and things like that but it was more of a mental um mental thing for me you you touched on a little bit of of it because I, you know we we spoke on the phone to have kind of a pre-interview and yeah. but i want to lead you down this road now you know one of the things you said is you had a whole lot of starting and stopping and starting and stopping and you get motivated be getting your fitness on tightening up the diet things are going great and then you hit a wall you stagnate you fall off and that that high and low cycle i think plagues a lot of people what what was the actual trigger or event or whatever it happened to be that was profound enough that you actually made the change happen for real and stuck with it? Um, it was when my son was start, starting to ride his bike. Um, 
he started the, you know, he was on his training wheels and did all that. But then he came to me and said, hey, take these off. He wanted his training wheels off. And he wanted me to run. Um, he wanted me to run with him and help him. Well, I wasn't in, I wasn't in shape. I couldn't do it. And that is, um, that is something that hurts me today. To, to I had to look at him and say, I can't. You got to wait till your mom gets home from work. Um, it was during the summer. Um, and I was home for summer. And, and it, that was, that was, I said, all right, I had enough of this. Um, and now I'm able to, you know, get over that and able, you know, my daughter, she learned how to ride her bike and I was able to run next to her during that. Um, how did that, that feel? Is, that, I mean, it was the biggest accomplishment I feel in my, in my journey so far. It's not the weight loss. It's not any of that. It's being able to be with my kids and help uh, when they need the help. And um, to be able to flip the switch and help, my, help with my daughter, it, you know, it, it, it meant a lot to me. So that was the catalyst that changed. And what I'm curious about now, and I don't know because we didn't cover it in any pre-interview or whatnot, is whatever you were doing before that would start and stop, start and stop. Were you, were you doing the same fitness, the same dietary changes, and this time they just stuck? Or were you doing something that wasn't as effective as what you're doing now? I'm going to be honest with you, is I went from fad, uh, fad diet to fad diet. Um, thinking something was going to stick. I was going to throw things at the wall and find one that stuck. Well, um, mm -hmm. that, that isn't life. That is not real life. That is not something you can obtain and keep at. Um, I had to find something that was sustainable for me. Um, at first I was trying, you know, hundred percent, you know, no cheat meals, no, you know, not getting off my rocker, not, not, you know, showing you know, how much discipline I have. Well, that was good for like right. three months. Um, right. Then I'd lose three months is actually pretty, a pretty long time to do that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and then I gain all the way back and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? So then I find the next fed diet and get jump on that. Um, and what it was doing really behind the scenes of, of what was going on was my son would see me like not eat that piece of cake or not have, um, you know, a treat with them or whatever. And so my son is starting to ask, you know, I didn't want him to get a um, unhealthy relationship with food. Right. I didn't want Those him to start feeling issues. like, yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want that for him. Um, mm -hmm. So I really had to look at myself and figure out what the heck I was going to do to make sure I was doing the right thing, not only for me, but for those that are watching. Um, because let's be honest, when we have kids, we have an audience all day. Um, mm -hmm. I have an audience at school and I have an audience at home and I need to make sure those kids are seeing normal. Um, and for me, sharing, you know, that piece of cake with my kid or, you know, I don't have 50 of them anymore like I used to, but right. I'll, have, I'll sit down and have some birthday cake. Uh, if we walk to the ice cream thing, maybe I'll stop and get a small shake and eat it with them. I'm not going mm -hmm. to, uh, I just want to show them a healthy environment um, and not saying, you know, it's, it's healthy to feed them sugar and do things like that. But at the same time, I just want to show them normal. You know what I mean? I don't want them to have a bad relationship with food. You and I find ourselves in agreement on that. I mean, to each their own. I guess if something works, yeah. you can't say that it's ineffective. But my my personal opinion and observation all these years is the individual or the household, either with themselves or their children, that's going like 100% strict, zero errors ever allowed, period, for the rest of your life. I see that crash and burn so frequently that I personally don't think it's a very smart or sustainable path. So I agree with you 100% on that. So, you know, were there some huge culprits in your diet that you had? To ch did you have to change what you were eating? Was it the portion that you were eating? Were you okay during the day, but like a secret snacker when nobody was around? Like what, what was it that you had to get your hands around and, and change? The biggest thing is like when I was alone. So, um, like in the car, I'd stop and get, grab a snack, um, or, Hey, I'm out. I'm going to go grab a drink. Um, things like that was my biggest thing of realizing, okay, just because I'm alone doesn't mean it's snack time. Um, right. so that was one of the habits. Like I would on the way to work, maybe I'd get a coffee and grab a muffin or something. Now it's maybe I'll grab a coffee and keep rolling. Um, 
So it's just trying to change small habits one at a time um, more than like a wholesale change. You know what I mean? Um, that I felt like that, I feel like that's been the biggest thing for me is to uh, kind of go at it habit by habit and change it as we go. Were you a big soda drinker at all? Uh, yeah, I was a Mountain Dew guy. I was a Mountain Dew guy at work. Um, Mountain Dew's like delicious. I, oh my that's God. That's the problem. Really. That's the problem. <laughs> it's so delicious. <laughs> so I was a Mountain Dew guy and, you know, two o'clock would hit at work and I'm like, oh, I'm dragging not realizing I'm dragging from the stuff I was feeding myself before work. And then I'm like, Oh, I'll just have a Mountain Dew and I'll be good to go. Well, you know, that didn't, now I see my, the errors in my ways. Now, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm humming at two o'clock. It's, it's no big deal. Um, but back then, you know, that's, that's kind of what I would go for. And it was just, like I said, just changing one, one habit at a time. And what would your advice be to people who either are on the path or want to get on the path you've made huge progress I mean, you've lost a hundred pounds and, and all indications are that you're on the path to, to achieve your goal with what you're doing, you know, with the supportive community and all that good stuff. Now that you're on the path, does that mean it's smooth sailing and those cravings are bad or do those little demons pop up every day and you got to battle them? I'm going to battle every day in my kitchen. Um, I, you know, people battle different demons throughout their day, no matter what it is. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's, a problem to have, uh, drink, whatever it is. They battle those demons. I battle sure. food. So I go to battle with something that nourishes my body that I need. And I need to realize that battle is real every day. And I need to make sure I fight for that meal. So like tonight when I go eat dinner, you know, I'm battling my demon with food and I got to decide and make that choice. So it's just, you know, trying to make that right choice 80% of the time for me. Um, and, I, and I feel that, that that's the biggest thing. Any, you know, any tips or lessons learned to people watching that are looking to start? I mean, would you describe how you eat as a particular diet or nutritional philosophy? Um, I don't, I, I, I don't have a nutritional philosophy, so to speak, because I try to just eat greens and meats and some rice. Um, my biggest thing is find a community. Find, if you can't find a community, find a person um, and tell them what you want to do and say, hey, can you help me be accountable? Um, that was my biggest thing is, is you know, I told my twin brother, like, hey, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, and he looked at me and said, okay, let's, I got you. You know, whatever you need. If, you're, if you need me, if you need to talk to me, if you need to do whatever, call me. Um, and that's what I think my biggest uh, piece of advice is, is find somebody that will battle with you. Um, no matter who it is, if you're in, you know, whatever community you're in, whatever person you can call, if you got a guy, you got a girl that you can call. Um, I think it's really important. It's like a battle buddy. 100%. And, you know, when you would go to the doctors, we all do every now and then for an, either a normal ailment or a checkup or whatnot, was your weight ever, brought up and if so did the physician ever give any useful guidance as to how to maybe get on a good path they would say they would mention hey you're pretty big uh, i'm like yeah i know but my all my markers were okay so they never mentioned hey you need to fix it they would just be like kind of on the bigger side but my my blood pressure was good um all my blood work was good so they never mentioned hey you need to lose weight too to be healthy they just were like, as long as the stuff's in check, you're good to go. Um, so they never really mentioned it. Um, and now when I go back to the doctor, it's like, what have you been doing? So it's, 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 a, different, it's a different conversation. And now when you go back to the doctor, do you use the CrossFit word? And if so, what, what's the doctor's reaction? I do. Um, and they say, well, how's your knees hold up to that? Isn't that really bad for your knees? I said, well, <laughs> um, it would be if I went about it the wrong way, but I have a community that helps me. So I'm okay. Um, oh. And uh, sometimes, you know, they're like, oh, you're deadlift and you know, things like that. And right. Kind of take it with a grain of salt and move on. Um, yep. So. Nope. That's, I think that's, that's the right course of action. Well, let's, let's kind of, um, you covered the nutrition one very, very well. Let's, let's kind of uh, start to close out with, you know, what does working out look like for you these days? I'm going to make a bold assumption that 
you become very competent at scaling workouts. I mean, so yeah. what does what does scaling look like for you, and how many times a, a week are you in the gym? Um, I am in my gym or garage or basement, one or the other. I'm in. Um, I try to be there five days a week. Um, I want nice. to do six. Good for you. Just um, six is a little much for me right now to say I'd go six, so I try to get five. Um, and at first, um, you know, I have, I have, I have weights, I have a rack, I have a bunch of stuff in the garage. Um, and at first I thought it was all about moving that weight. Uh, you know, I want to deadlift every plate I have. I want to squat every plate I have. Um, and now that I am with linchpin, it's a different story for me because I'm always hit with scaling is cool. Scaling is good. So now I would, I'll show you just a quick glimpse of where I work yeah, out take right a on that mat. So nice. I don't use weights as much as I used to. Now, if it's a barbell workout, I'll go to the garage and do that. But usually I scale it to either limited equipment or no equipment. Like tonight, I'll do the no equipment one. It just because it, it serves me well um, mm -hmm. to make sure one of the things that you say or, or that we say is, we want to be able to work out tomorrow. We want to be healthy enough to work out again. Um, and I feel that when I am doing the either n the no equipment or, um, you know, less available equipment, that, that is good for me. Um, now, when, you, when we get to go squat one by, you know, whatever and, and do that kind of stuff, I'm all in. I'm, I'm all in. Right. <laughs> but to get the workouts in and, and make sure I can work out again tomorrow with my knees feeling good and my body feeling good, um, it's all scaled. Um, I, I don't do much running. I get on the bike. Um, I'll do jumping jacks, um, things like that. I try not to do uh, too much jump rope just because, you know, I want to be able to work out. Again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And we, we say that all the time. It's absolutely true. Scaling is cool. It's intelligent. It, it's the path to progress. The truth is more people should do it more frequently, even those that have been doing CrossFit for a very long time. It is certainly not a bad word. So I'm really happy that you've, uh, that you've embraced that. Man, Zach, I appreciate it. I, I'm very happy to have you in the community. I'm excited to, to track your progress and maybe we'll have to have you back on in six months or a year and just kind of check back in, keep you accountable. Yeah, I need it, man. I need it. That's, uh, it's one of the beautiful things about, uh, our group just to, just to say, you know, it's, uh, I can post whatever I need there and, and, uh, people have my back. So it's, uh, it's, I love it here. It's great. Well, I know you're out there on the East Coast, so hey, take care of the kids. You know, do the dinner times out there, get them set. I'm gonna head into my garage and work out, and I will see you in the private Facebook group, my friend. All right, thanks. Man.